Today on Political Access, we've got a fantastic battle for you. It's going to be Amy Klobuchar for the Democrats up against J.D. Vance for the Republicans. Two U.S. Senators squaring off from Minnesota and Ohio. This was suggested to me in the comments. This seems like a fun one. Let's get started. Right off the bat, it's going to come down to the same five or ten states. But as for these two candidates, Amy Klobuchar, she is pure establishment. She's been in the Senate for a while now. She's got some seniority. People know who she is, at least in terms of the Democrats. Nationally, she would still have to work to build her name recognition. But I think she would come down pretty much as a run-of-the-mill Democrat. Not very exciting, in my opinion. She tries, but I just don't think it lands. She would have appeal in the suburbs. She would probably talk about abortion. That's going to be her strength. Now, J.D. Vance, he's much younger. He just got in the Senate this year, so he has some time to build his image, and he would also have to get his name recognition up. I think there's plenty of voters who would have no idea who he is. He has been endorsed by Donald Trump. He has appeal with the base. I think so far in his short time in the Senate, he seems to be popular enough. That might play well in the Rust Belt, especially if he focuses on populist economics, and that would include going after corporations, expanding health care, protecting workers. He's got to do that in addition to his populist appeal on the cultural side, and that's going to be things like crime, identity politics, immigration, free speech, etc. So let's get into this. We'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. We'll start in Alaska. That's still a red state, and I think Vance would win it by over 10 points safe for Vance. Hawaii, that is definitely going to be safe for Klobuchar. Now we go back up to the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California. Those are always blue states, and this time they're going to stay blue. Let's go to Nevada. This state might be trending a little bit toward the Republicans. They do have a hard time getting over the edge, but maybe J.D. Vance is the right guy to do it, or maybe Amy Klobuchar. She's a safe choice. She would get enough voters out of Washoe County and Clark County, and she'd win by two or three. However, her relatively unexciting personality would reduce turnout by a couple of points. I think J.D. Vance, he would speak to a new generation of voters, and he would be able to win Nevada by about one to two points. So I have it as a leans for Vance. Next, Idaho and Utah, those are going to be safe for Vance. Now we've got Arizona. It's become a classic swing state, definitely trending toward the left. In this matchup, I have J.D. Vance winning it by a tilt margin. I'm assuming he's going to be less controversial than Trump, but still get enough of the base to turn out while not scaring away as many independents and voters in the suburbs. But it would be very close. Next state, Montana, safe for Vance. Wyoming, safe for Vance. Colorado, I think that'll get down just barely under 10 points, likely for Klobuchar. New Mexico, that'll be about 5 points. Also likely for Klobuchar. North and South Dakota, safe for Vance. Nebraska at large, safe for Vance. The second district, that's much more competitive, trending away from the Republicans. I'm not sure how well Vance would do there. It's more suburban. I think Klobuchar is a better fit. I have her winning it by a tilt margin. Kansas, safe for Vance. Oklahoma, safe for Vance. Texas, that is going to be likely more than five points for Vance. Now let's go up to Amy Klobuchar's home state of Minnesota. With her on the ballot, she already cruises to re-election in her Senate bids. If she's on the ballot for president, there's no question she would win that. I think it would hit double digits, maybe 11 or 12 points, so it's going to be safe for Klobuchar. Let's go to Iowa. That does border Minnesota. That could help Amy Klobuchar by maybe a point or so. I do have it as high single digits, probably 9 to 10 points for J.D. Vance. Missouri, safe for Vance. Arkansas, Louisiana, safe for Vance. Now we've got Wisconsin, very tough state. It borders Minnesota. That should help Klobuchar slightly. But as we head into this Rust Belt, Wisconsin is a very competitive state. I actually think J.D. Vance would do pretty well here. He would not get blown out in the suburbs. He would hold off the trends of the Wow counties. He would get out enough of the voters in the Driftless area. And it could go either way, but I have it as a tilt for Vance. Illinois, safe for Klobuchar. Now let's go to Michigan. Here's another super tough state. Vance is probably a better fit here than Amy Klobuchar. The only thing against Vance here is he's new, doesn't have much of a track record. We got to see what he does. So there's potential here. Maybe it turns out to be too scary, or maybe he turns out to be a strong voice for the Rust Belt. Either way, just to be safe, I put it as a tilt for Klobuchar. Indiana, safe for Vance. Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, safe for Vance. Let's go down to Florida. The state is trended toward the right. I think Vance would do well enough here to get out the base. Klobuchar, she's not going to excite the progressives. This goes to Vance by a likely margin. Now let's go one state north to Georgia. This is another super tough call for me. It's trended away from the Republicans. Outside of Brian Kemp winning re-election, the Republicans have had minimal luck here on key races. I think the Atlanta suburbs would probably prefer Amy Klobuchar a little bit more than J.D. Vance. I could be wrong, but that ended up tipping the state for me, so it's a tilt for Klobuchar. 
South Carolina, safe for Vance. North Carolina, that's going to be lanes for Vance. Let's go to Ohio. J.D. Vance is home state. This is going to clear 10 points. Safe for Vance. How about neighboring West Virginia? Easy call. Safe for Vance. Let's go to Maine at large. This I have is about 5.5 points, likely for Klobuchar. The 1st District, safe for Klobuchar. The 2nd District, that's the more Trump-friendly district. I think Vance would be a good fit here. I have this as high single digits, likely for Vance. It's possible it gets over 10, but to be safe, I kept it unlikely. Now let's go to New Hampshire. This is a state I think Klobuchar would probably win more voters in the middle and it would be close but in the end i have it going to klobuchar by a lean margin probably one to two points now we've got the blue states vermont new york massachusetts connecticut rhode island new jersey delaware maryland and washington dc those are all going to stay safe for amy klobuchar now we've got pennsylvania this does border ohio i think vance would do pretty well here in the western part of the state and the t and even if he doesn't do well in the suburbs of philadelphia i think he should be able to move the state a couple of points to the right and i have him winning it by a tilt margin and the last state is going to be virginia and that is going to be about five to seven points likely for klobuchar and there's your final map and that comes out to 281 for jd vance 257 for Amy Klobuchar. It's close, but I do see Vance as being the stronger candidate here. As I said, it's early, but Vance, he's probably a reasonably strong candidate for the Rust Belt. Klobuchar, probably a little bit better in the suburbs, but this assumes both of these candidates get their name recognition all the way up to run a serious national campaign. I think Vance would do much better with his base and not have voters animated to come out against him. He wouldn't get completely wiped out in the suburbs. Klobuchar, she's not going to do much for the progressive base. She would do decent with the suburbs. And she is capable of winning Arizona, Wisconsin, or Pennsylvania. But on the other hand, I think Vance could flip Georgia. Either way, Klobuchar, I don't think she's exciting enough for her base or exciting enough in general. Vance, I think, would have more energy and he would speak to more populist issues, certainly on culture, probably a little bit more than the Republicans are used to on economics. So that might be the right mix to win a national campaign. It remains to be seen. Depends on the national environment. It depends on running mates. It depends on what the big issues are at the time. So I think this was a great matchup. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree with this map or would you make some changes and have Klobuchar on top? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.